So let's do some player appraisals. It was 31 points to South Africa, 27 to New Zealand. Let's start with the All Blacks, the visitors who came so close and they will be kicking themselves because they played a really good game, to be honest, scored some brilliant tries, but didn't have enough in the end. The bench was definitely a difference. We'll talk about that. I'm not going to give scores out of 10. It's just too hard. I've come off the back of a long live stream. Thank you to everyone who followed me for that watch along. I'll do some more in the future, maybe in those autumn internationals. That's kind of my match report for this one. So do have a look at that. and I'll get some timestamps on there when I can. Starting with the All Blacks front row and young Tamisi Williams was OK. Uh, got dominated a few times in the scrum early on. Looked all right didn't have a massive impact around the park so kind of an average mark I'd say for him Taylor was very impressive though Cody Taylor his line out throwing was phenomenal one long throw over the top the set up one of Clark's tries was a beauty really got them going forward allowed a Bowden Barrett to come round at pace and his work around the park is phenomenal top top player very reliable good game for him shame it didn't end in a win for him of course and Terrell Lomax had a really good game. He is their premier tight head for a reason. Super solid around the park and some brilliant hands to set up the second of Clark's tries or one of Clark's tries. I'm a bit mixed at the moment. Then the second rows, I'd say a bit meh for the second rows. They were fine. They didn't have any glaring errors, but they weren't having that massive impact on the game. From what I saw, I would probably give the South African second rows the better marks, even though, of course, there's a lot of their second rows out. So... Kind of a bit of a minus mark, I guess, for Barrett and Vai, who were fine but probably overshadowed. The best back row for New Zealand was definitely Ethan Blackadder. He has an absolute engine on him and he's fairly quick and he hits like a train. He was everywhere, could have scored, very impressed with him. They brought Sam Kane in for some experience and he went through a mountain of tackles. Didn't see a lot in attack, but he definitely worked incredibly hard in that contact area. A bit of a shame for Ardi Surveyor, who had probably one of his, not worst games, but didn't have the impact he would normally have. And then he gave away a penalty at the end, which was costly. I thought it was pretty harsh, right on the edge, but it was a costly penalty. Didn't have the impact in attack, so probably a poorer game for him. Perinara, I thought, was very good. I really got the attack going forward. Some front football for McKenzie, and McKenzie is that big difference in attack. Didn't have any of the nightmares he had in previous games. Sometimes he's a little bit, you know, heart in the mouth sort of stuff, but got some offloads, some lovely passes, some lovely breaks, some nice kicking as well. So good game for McKenzie. Geordie Barrett, excellent game for Geordie Barrett. And that interception was phenomenal for that try because he had seen the play twice. I said it in my live stream. South Africa were trying to go really wide off the line out and put that extra pop pass in to get Khaleesi going. And Geordie Barrett said, thank you very much. The third time you do it, I know what's happening. And he intercepted and went the distance. So top try for him. Yuani, I'd say, was a bit disappointing. I made a few comments in the live stream that he is a bit underpowered. His rucking is awful, essentially. And he lost the ball a couple of times there. Made a few decent half breaks in attack, but his position is definitely under threat. Well, Jordan was OK, made a few nice half breaks, but a couple of errors, looks a little underpowered at times, a really bad uh, knock-on off a kick, gave South Africa a great chance at the end there. Clark was brilliant. Caleb Clark is 100% ready now for the All Blacks. When he started playing for the All Blacks, he was a bit green. He made a lot of mistakes in defence, etc. But his work under the high ball was brilliant. His finishing was phenomenal. He is that power winger that they need, 100% a starter. Um, Jordan, little question mark maybe. Bowden Barrett, some class touches, particularly in attack, comes onto the ball with such pace out wide and passing on the move, a feeding Clark twice beautifully. So some good stuff there. But then the bench, not quite so good, although I think Twinga Fassi came on, had a decent impact in the scrum, but then got that yellow card, which was costly. Darry, I think, got the ball ripped off him uh, fairly easy. Finau didn't have the impact. Ratima over chased to let that try in uh, from Quagga Smith. Leonard Brown, I didn't notice. Talaya, you know, should they had a 6 2 bench maybe? It was a bit of a strange one, but definitely the game slipped away from them as those subs came on and they waited a long time to get the subs on, maybe because they knew they didn't have the strength on the bench that maybe South Africa did. So that's my take 
on New Zealand. So let's talk about the Springboks now. Amazing heart to come back and win that match. Some brilliant power, some good execution right at the end as well. The starting front row was looking very solid, although they didn't get that change in the scrum. They weren't getting the penalties, which was a bit disappointing about half an hour into the match. I was saying in the live stream, not having the impact they'd have wanted, but they didn't do anything wrong either. So no solid games for them, although not getting those penalties they'd have wanted. Then the star man once again, I think he was player of the match. Maybe you should just give Peter Steff toy player of the match before the game starts. He's that good. He was in the second row, then to the back row, then back into the second row. Class act really good in the line out. Amazing to think he's not a regular second row. You know, he's a world class second row, even though he doesn't normally play there. Uh, Nokia, I thought, was very tidy. He's a good technician. He's not got that bulk, that impact of some of those other players. But considering they don't have uh, many fit second rows, he was very important, came back after an HIA and was very technically good. Khaleesi, a shame he had to go off because I thought he was playing very well. Uh, very physical, got a knock, another good game for him. Ben Jason Dixon didn't have the impact he'd have liked, so not a great game for him. He'll have better games, I'm sure, and he was hooked just before half time, which, you know, isn't a good look, to be honest. Decent in the line out, but not the best for him. Jasper Visa was the second man of the match for me. He was immense. I was saying, should he come straight back in off his red card ban? Well, the answer was yes. And that was probably the best I think Jasper Visa play. He was a beast in the carrier. I know he's a good carrier, but he was just phenomenal. His tackling was immense. Physical, direct, didn't make some errors. He can make errors, get cards, etc. But he was nice and clean today as well. So that was quality from him. In the live stream, I did say I wasn't too impressed with Kobus Reinach. He was okay, some good kicks. Didn't think his service was the quickest. Maybe a little slow off the base sometimes. Still a good player, getting on a little bit. When Williams came on, he definitely upped the pace. So Reinach, so-so. Interesting to know where they'll go with their scrum half starter. He was, I wouldn't say, a nailed-on starter. Sasha Feinberg, Mugomazulu. Well, the talent is clear for everyone to see. 60-metre penalty was phenomenal. But a couple of mistakes as well. Not glaring errors like dropping a try as he did in previous games. And then one brilliant kick to touch, you know, to win the match. Must have just skimmed inside that uh, the flag, uh, the corner flag, to get a five-metre line out more, which they scored off, of course. So... Class touches from him. Damien Dielande was physical and nasty in that first half. I said in the live stream, his counter-rucking and tackling was phenomenal. But then, of course, he just pushed on that ball one too many for that intercept to Geordie Barrett. He was desperate to do the play they'd been practising instead of playing what was in front of him. So that was a bad error. So, you know, half and a half there. Creel had to move to the wing. A few nice steps on the wing. Not his best game, I'd say, but OK. You know, that 6-2 split is tough. You have to move out of your best position. Colby, they tried to get into the game. Made some half breaks. Didn't fully get into the game. Uh, Arenza, again, didn't really get into the game. And got badly concussed. I hope he's OK. So not a great game for him, I guess. Fassi copped a yellow card, but generally was pretty good. Some good highball takes and a couple of blistering breaks. One they probably should have done better on. He maybe could have given an inside ball, but he chipped out uh, for Colby and it didn't work out. So maybe that was costly, but still he was a real difference in attack, that's for sure. Interesting to see if he retains his 15 shirt. The bomb squad came on and had a little wobbly spell, actually, but then they got better as the match went on. Etzebeth came on early in the match and stayed on and looked fully fit to me. So I don't know what they were going on about, but he was really immense an absolute titan elric low i thought had some really good touches as well one restart where he stepped and went another 10 meters was impressive he's a good player but again visa showing why probably he should start at eight and then grant williams with that winning try blistering pace he is so hard to mark what a great guy to bring off the bench probably deserves a start as well and pollard didn't have a massive impact, had to come on and play in the centre, where he's probably not the best. Um, so didn't have too much of a chance to, to shine, I guess. But so those are my player appraisals for the All Blacks, for the Springboks. It was a hell of a game, really close. The Springboks coming out on top. Let me know how you'd rate those players' performances. Comment down below, like, subscribe. That would be amazing. And I'll catch you next time.